Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at displacement reactions of halogens. Um, so the word displacement effectively means swapping, so these are just reactions in which we um, might be able to swap a halogen around, obviously depending on the reactivity. So in this video we're going to look at um, what we mean when we say a halogen is more reactive than the other. Uh, we're also going to look at the uh, equations related to uh, halogen displacement reactions uh, and also uh, observations that you would see as well, so um, so practical um, applications of this as well. Okay, so we're going to start with um, what an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent is. Now, this is a, um, a very, very important aspect because it allows us to explain uh, what's happening in the displacement reaction. And so effectively, an oxidizing agent is something that will gain electrons. So that's any species that will accept electrons. So generally, atoms that have uh, that are very electronegative or generally, uh, well, usually are very strong oxidizing agents. Uh, and reducing agents are chemicals which will reduce uh, a, um, another chemical and hence they will lose electrons as well. Now, there is a video that looks into um, oxidation and reduction and the explanation behind it in terms of electrons as well. Uh, so if you're not sure what oxidation is or reduction is or the agents regarding them, then if you just click on the link below. Uh, you can have a look at that, but for this case, I'm just going to assume that you know uh, what an oxidizing and reducing agent is and the process of oxidation and reduction as well. Okay, so basically, um, what you need to remember for this type of reaction is that a more reactive halogen will always displace a less reactive one. Um, and what we mean when we say reactive is we actually uh, talk about it in terms of oxi ox oxidizing agents. So um, we've got a list of halogens here, and these are the ones that you would generally find, well, these are the ones that you do find in group seven. So these are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Now, um, these ones, as you go up the group, they actually become better oxidizing agents. That means that the halogen at the top, which in this case is fluorine, uh, is more likely to um, gain electrons than the halogen at the bottom. And the reason why is to do with the size of the atom as well. So fluorine is a really, really, really small atom. Um, it has very little shielding. That means it doesn't have many electrons around it. So the attractive ability to pull electrons um, towards fluorine is very, very strong. Uh, compared to something like astatine or iodine, which is right down at the bottom, these are massive atoms. They have a lot of electron shells. Uh, even though they have more protons in the nucleus, um, the shielding is so great that actually the ability for this atom to take electrons is quite weak. So we describe these as not very reactive and they are weak oxidizing agents as well. Okay, so we need to remember this to be able to explain what's going on here. So um, I've drawn a grid here. The grid is, um, is quite a, a, um, a very quick way of showing you um, as many reactions as I can and explain them as well. So effectively what we've got is we've got a list of halogens here. So we we'll start with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Now, these are the um, raw halogens. Sometimes they can be dissolved in water as well. So for example, you might use things like chlorine water, and bromine is a liquid anyway, but um, and iodine is a solid, so we might need to make iodine solution. And um, these reactions are basically solutions when we mix them together, and this is what I'm assuming here. Um, fluorine is again dissolved in solution as well. So actually when we're talking about the halogens, we're talking about the watered down version of these halogens. Um, and then we're going to mix them with um, the halide equivalent, the halide ion equivalent. Now ions uh, from halogens normally come from salts, in fact they do. So um, we call them sodium fluoride, for example. Um, so to get a fluoride ion, um, we need to take sodium fluoride, which is a, a white solid, uh, you add that to uh, water and it dissolves uh, and then you form your halide ions. Um, ions will only exist when they're in solution. Um, you can't get a pot of um, I minus ions uh, and then just um, react it with that. You have to actually make the ions and one way of doing it is using the salt and dissolving it in water and you get your ion. So what we're going to do is we're going to react these two together and if we get a reaction I'm going to write down what the products are and what you would see and if we don't I'm just going to put a red cross. Um, and actually the vast majority of these, uh, you won't actually get a reaction. So we're going to start with um, F2. So F2 is fluorine. Now fluorine is a really good oxidizing agent, very reactive. React that with something like F- minus because these are equally as powerful and we effectively get no displacement reaction. So I'm going to put a cross on there so we get no reaction at all. If we come over to this one, now we've got F2 plus NaCl. 
And um, actually, this will react because fluorine, which is this one here, is more reactive than chlorine. So what it'll do is it'll actually swap the fluorine and the chlorine will actually swap over. Uh, and what you'd make is this: you'd make NaF. So put that there. So you'd see the fluorine swapped over, and you'll form Cl2. Um, now, obviously, this needs to be balanced. So I'm just going to balance this in blue. So you'll need a two in front of there, and you'll need a two in front of there. Um, and so that makes it balanced. Now, because this is a displacement reaction, and um, fluorine is actually very pale yellow, um, I'm going to write this in, a, in blue. So this is pale yellow. Um, and remember, all of these are solution. These are colorless, so these don't actually have a color. So effectively, what will form is chlorine. Now, chlorine uh, is actually um, pale green. I'm going to put that on there. So the solution that we would see. So because we produce chlorine as a product, actually what you'll see is a pale green. Your solution should go pale green. It should go from colorless to pale green. OK, if we go on to the next one, F2 plus NaBr, uh, react these together. And what you'll form is NaF um, and Br2. Remember, halogens always have to go around as a pair. So that's very, very important. Uh, again, these need to be balanced, so we're just going to put the twos in front of there. And uh, effectively, because we've actually had a displacement reaction, this is colourless, halide salts are colourless. This is bromine. Now, bromine is like a, a, a brownie orange colour. Brown slash orange. So I'll put that on there. So I'm just going to put orange on here. It's more of an orange colour. So you should see an orange solution start to form with this reaction. Uh, again, it'll go from colourless, sodium bromide with colourless, to orange. So you'll see a colour change. So that, that tells you that you've got a displacement reaction. Okay, so the next one, um, fluorine is more reactive than iodine. You can see fluorine is higher up than iodine. So we actually do get a reaction here as well. So we'll form sodium um, fluoride, NaF, plus I2. And again, if we have to balance that, you put the twos in exactly the same place for all of these. So put two on there and the two on there. Um, and what you'd see is iodine. Now iodine is actually, as a solution, is a really deep purple colour. Okay, so put that on there. Really, really dark colour. So what you'd get here is deep purple. Almost black, effectively. Like a really, really dark colour. Okay, so this, you would actually get a reaction. Okay, so if we come down to the next one here, which is chlorine. Now, chlorine reacts with sodium fluoride. Fluorine is more reactive than chlorine, so here we get no reaction. So we're going to put across there. Okay, chlorine reacts with chlorine. Because they're equally as reactive, we get no reaction there either. Okay, uh, and if we come down onto this one, chlorine is more reactive than bromine. So actually, we do get a reaction in this case. So we're going to write our products. So we have chlorine swapping with the bromine, so you get NaCl plus, and you get Br2. So there's our reaction there. And the products that we make is we get this orangey colour here, which is from the bromine. So when we react these two together and we get an orange solution, uh, then we know we've actually formed uh, bromine. Okay, on the next one, which is Cl2 plus Ni, NaI, sorry. So chlorine is more reactive than iodine because it's higher up in the group. So we're going to form sodium uh, chloride plus I2. Okay. Uh, again, we're going to balance these. I'll just quickly balance this one as well. But the twos are in the same place. There you go. Uh, and we get this deep purple colour again uh, because we formed iodine. So that's a classic sign that actually we have a reaction that's occurred here. So put deep purple. Okay. Right. On to the next one. So bromine. So as we, as you can see, we're kind of going further down. Bromine is not as reactive. So bromine reacting with a fluoride compound is going to be no reaction. Uh, bromine is not strong enough as an oxidizing agent. Bromine reacting with sodium chloride. Bromine is not as reactive as chlorine, so we get no reaction. Um, bromine reacting with bromine. Obviously, they're just as reactive, so we don't get a reaction there either. We get no displacement. Um, but we do here. Um, now you can see that. We have Br2 plus NaI. Bromine is more reactive than iodine, so we form sodium bromide, NaBr, uh, and we form I2 as well. And again, if we balance all that equation, 
I'll put the two there, the two there. And what we should form is iodine solution, which is deep purple. And I think you can see a, you might start to see a bit of a pattern forming now. There you go. So that forms a deep purple colour. So that's really, really important. Okay. And then if we come on to the last one, uh, if you notice this pattern that's actually occurring here, uh, iodine reacting with fluorine. Iodine is not as reactive as fluorine, so we get no reaction. Iodine is not as reactive as chlorine either, so we get no reaction. Iodine reacting with bromine is not as reactive. And uh, iodine reacting with iodine is obviously just as reactive as each other, so we get no reaction there. So you can see here that actually we have um, some reactions that actually do occur, which are these ones here, but we don't along here. And actually the vast majority, as you can see here, they, um, they actually don't react. So um, it is important that you do need to be able to remember these. The equations are showing you the full equations, but you'll notice that they might ask you to write uh, ionic equations as well. And all you have to do is remove the sodium from there, and they're your spectator ions. Um, so you might do F2 plus Cl minus will form F minus plus Cl2. So they could write it in ionic form as well, just remove the sodiums from there and turn um, any halogens that was attached to the sodiums into ions. But um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.